I understand you knew him or mm. know of him. Uh, tell me how you how you know him. Okay, um, I grew up on uh, on the street where he went. Where he was in a foster home. He was about four years older than me. Um, very obviously in sports. He always looked out for me and a couple of friends. Because in the boys' home, there was other kids there, and those kids were like a lot of trouble, and they would come and mess with the neighborhood kids, and he would tell them, yo, don't mess with these guys, you know, I know who they are, or no. and he's cool like that. So he kind of just kind of had our backs against the other boys in the, in the boys' home, and just protected, you know, the, the younger kids from, the, from those kids. Okay, so you were in the foster home and Lawrence was in No, the I lived on the street of the foster home in West Covina, California. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, so it was, it was West he went to West Covina, he transferred to Baldwin Park while he was playing high school, but the boys' home was on my street, like maybe four houses down. Yeah. Okay, so um, Lawrence, he would uh, protect you, I guess you would say. Yeah. So talk to me about some of those. Well, he actually, you know, like I only knew him <laughs> till when he le after he graduated and went to college. After that, I never saw him again. But while I knew of him, there was a time when we were playing basketball at the elementary um, school. And there was this cocky kid playing, and he was dunking on the small courts, and Lawrence Phillips walking through the school, and he's like, he's like, you know, anything you do, because he saw how the, how the kid was react, like kind of show, showboating off to the other kids, the younger kids. And he was like, any dunk you could do on the small court, I'll do on the big court. So, you know, the guy was all right. So he started dunking on the small court, and Lawrence Phillips did the exact same dunk that he did on the big courts, and that just shows the athleticism. And then, um, one of the cool things he did to me personally is, you know, I, 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 I couldn't dunk, you know. So he was like, hey, you want to dunk, little man? I was like, yeah, cool. So we dragged the picnic table under the basketball court. And he was like, go for it, you know. So I was just running off the picnic table and dunking and stuff, you know. So that's kind of like the Lawrence Phillips I knew, you know, the, the, the kind of the good-hearted, you know. And unfortunately, his lifestyle, or not his lifestyle, but his childhood, I'm not making excuses for him because, you know, we all make our choices when we get older, but he's bouncing in and out of foster homes. His mom basically abandoned him as a kid, you know, so it's kind of like he had a lot of anger, you know, inside of him. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that, about um, the little, the, 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 what you know of Lawrence Phillips. Um, would you say that where he was at was kind of, it was a hard upbringing? Um, not necessarily the street we're on, it wasn't like the ghetto or anything, you know, but um, just being in a boy's home alone, not having a family, and obviously those kids are through the system, you know, and um, like I said, he was abandoned by his mom, um, I don't know his whole life story, but other than the Lawrence Phillips I knew was a football player, the star football player in high school, you know, got, went to Nebraska, could have won the Heisman if he didn't throw his girlfriend down the stairs, you know. But um, the Lawrence Phillips I knew was a hard working every day, you, you know, trying to chase a dream, I guess, you know, play football for the rest of his life. Unfortunately, he didn't have that right support group. Yeah. Now, now what, what's your reaction? It sounds like, um, you know, from where you knew him as a, as a kid to where, you know, his um, career ended up going with the whole legal troubles and stuff. Talk to me about that, about, you know, finding out, you know, when he first got in trouble and then, you know, was put in jail. And I was kind of, you know, disappointed because, like, we looked up to him, like, oh, well, he, you know, when, once he went to Nebraska and you started seeing him on TV a lot, you know, ESPN and all that, uh, you, you know, you looked at him like a role model, like, oh, man, we, you know, he's inspiring to, you know, especially the life going, bouncing in and out of group homes, you know. And um, once he started getting in trouble with the law, we're kind of dis disappointed, you know. I always, uh, honestly, I always prayed that he had the right friends and families. Unfortunately, that didn't look like the case. And when I found out he you know, went to jail, prison for 30 years for running over the kids um, over a football game or he was claiming they stole some money from him, I was kind of just like, just kind of sad in a way because, you know, you work so hard to get somewhere in your life and just like, just don't think about your actions, you know, like if only he would have been like, you know, thought about what he did before, you know, and, you know, and then with the cellmate getting accused, uh, I read through articles, you know, that he actually asked to um, not be with somebody because he knew people knew who he was and they would be messing with him. So he kind of want, he asked to be in solitary, you know, and I guess at this point, 
like when when I found out what you told when you told me about he committed suicide. I mean, you saw my reaction. How I was in shock. And at the, and now now that I had some time to kind of think about it, I guess it's kind of like maybe he just felt you know he's being going to be accused of murder, spend the rest of his life in prison. He maybe he felt he just didn't have no hope no more. You know, and just I mean I don't know why people. I mean, everyone's life's different, you know. I can't, I can't answer for him, but it just looks like he just lost all hope, you know. Yeah. Now, being a, um, a photographer uh, for <laughs> here for us, um, you know, I'm pretty sure. Have, have you ever gone to any of these court proceedings? No, I, I, I didn't go see him. So, um, honestly, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't want to go see him, you know, and cover the, the story only because. I might be like biased about it, you know, like how I am right now. I'm not protecting his actions. You know, he did what he did, and you do you do the do the time you, you do the crime, you do the time, you know. But I just felt as a person, he just probably never had, you know, support group, you know, or family, friends, you know. Um, I just felt all, all alone, you know. Yeah. yeah, no, it's it's pretty remarkable. It's a small world. Um, the fact that you knew him. Um, at what age were you guys though? He was about 40. He's 40, I, I believe it said on there. Was it? I'm 37, so we're like three years apart. Three years apart. And when you knew him in West Covina, you guys were what, like teenagers? Or yeah. About yeah. He was in high school. I was in probably my freshman year, and he transferred to Bolton Park. So you guys went to Bolton Park no, together? I went to West Covina, then he transferred from West Covina to Bolton Park to go play football. Oh, okay. Okay. So you, did you see him at West Covina at all? Yeah. I saw, actually, I saw him play at Bolton Park. And, um, I was, <laughs> I can do the touchdown after touchdown, you know? And it's funny, I actually seen him in a restaurant, like, maybe a couple of weeks after that, because I went with a friend, my mom's friend at the time, and he was all into Lawrence Phillips, and he knew that he lived down the street, you know? And we actually saw him, like, in a restaurant, and, and uh, he was, my mom's friend was kind of like, oh, like, in, in awe, you know? And Lawrence Phillips just looked at us, he just said, uh, what's up, you know? He, we, didn't, we didn't speak, he just, What's up? You know, like he knew who I was. I know who he was. You know, and this is like his senior year. He's about to go get go to Nebraska. You know, so so it was pretty obvious that he was good enough to that he was going to be doing. Oh yeah, once you saw him play, even in high school, you know, it's like just like touchdown, touchdown. You know, running through people, the speed. You know, and obviously when he went to Nebraska, there's so many highlights of him. You know, and. NFL, unfortunately, I just, he didn't have a good career. Yeah. Now, you were saying that um, after he left for high school and went to college, you, you kind of lost space with him. Yeah. Okay, so, um, you know, I, I know you, you lost space, and it's been years since you, you talked to him. Mm. But, um, you know, what do you hope, um, you know, even with all this bad stuff, his, his legacy will be that people will mm. remember him for? Well, Lawrence Phillips, I mean... What I knew of him was he really did have a good heart, you know. Like this, if if I I wouldn't be saying this because if he didn't treat us right, I wouldn't. I'd be like, well, that's I would be telling the truth, you know. But he really was genuine, caring about the the younger kids in the neighborhood, you know, making sure they didn't get picked on. And his legacy, if you want to take as legacy, I don't know because it's not a good legacy, obviously, you know, because or the opportunity he was given. He worked so hard to be an NFL player, you know? I mean, not, not everyone could do that, you know? And just to not realize where you're at, I think it's, it's really is unfortunate that he never found the right people to be with. Just the people that were around him probably were no good using his money, you know? And and when he got broke, I mean, now he knows who his real, who his real friends are, you know, or his family or whatnot. But his legacy with this, for me, is just someone, as a, as a teenager, because that's when I knew him, really was a good kid, you know? And unfortunately, he couldn't resolve his, his monsters inside of him.